This is the outer rim. You have no rights here. We're not under the Empire's... <laughs> Welcome back to Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy. The Inquisitors are some of the coolest additions to Star Wars, and now they have finally made their live action appearance in the saga. Some of the Inquisitors that appeared in the first two episodes of Obi-Wan Kenobi have appeared before in animated form. But the third sister, Reva, is someone completely new to Star Wars, and her story is shaping up to be very interesting. Obi-Wan. Dark side is strong with Reva. She's going to kill anyone who gets in her way, and she will do anything to achieve her goals. And for some reason, she's hell bent on hunting down Obi Wan. And yet, the other Inquisitors look down on her, and it's not because of her defiance and aspirations. It will not change what you are. And what is that? The least of us. And we have a theory about why the Inquisitors are so hostile toward her and why she hates Grandpa Ben so much. When you're my daughter. Granddaughter, maybe. What? But before we get to our theory, we must first explain who these Inquisitors are. Because for so many Star Wars fans who didn't watch Rebels or read the comics, this is their first introduction to the Inquisitors. You know who we are. Inquisitors. You know what we do? You hunt Jedi. The Imperial Inquisitors are an order of dark side users, and their mission is to hunt down and kill any Jedi who survived Order 66. The Inquisitors' arrival in the Obi-Wan Kenobi show marks their first ever live action appearance in Star Wars. The Inquisitors made their debut in the Star Wars Rebels animated show. They later appeared in the comics as well as the awesome Jedi Fallen Order video game. So here's how the Inquisitor Order was created. The Inquisitors are mostly all former Jedi. During the Clone Wars, Darth Sidious began making preparations for the downfall of the Jedi Order. Originally, he planned to kidnap four sensitive children and brainwash them into his own private army. Later, Sidious began to notice some Jedi became disillusioned with the Jedi Order. That the Jedi are the ones responsible for this war. That we've so lost our way that we have become villains in this conflict. Other Inquisitors returned to the dark side after torture and brainwashing. By the time Sidious had executed Order 66, he had already assembled his future Inquisitor Order. He knew that some Jedi would survive the Purge, and that's why the Inquisitor Order was created, to hunt down all the Jedi who were still alive. He basically brainwashed former Jedi to hunt their own. The first member of the Order that we ever met is the Grand Inquisitor, who also appears in Obi-Wan and Rebels. Before Order 66, he was a Jedi Temple Guard, but he was seduced by Sidious and turned to the dark side. At the end of that episode, Reva stabs the Grand Inquisitor, but he's not really dead. The Grand Inquisitor plays a big role in Rebels. The animated show takes place about five years before the events of A New Hope, while Obi-Wan Kenobi is set ten years before the events of New Hope. So, since the Grand Inquisitor will show up five years after his apparent death, that means he's not really dead. Unless these two are separate characters that just happen to look the same and be the same in every other way. And that would be really weird and convoluted. Corporate needs you to find the differences between this picture and this picture. They're the same picture. Though maybe the Emperor cloned the Grand Inquisitor or something. He's experimenting with it, so why not? Somehow Palpatine returned. Uh, nah, look, he survived. That's the simplest answer. I mean, Reva only stabbed him in the belly. There's nothing important in there. Being stabbed or shot in Star Wars is really not a big deal anymore. Throughout Rebels, we were introduced to other Inquisitors. They're all labeled by either the title brother or sister, each given numerical designations representing the order that they entered the order. This is why Reva is called the third sister, and he is the fifth brother. While all the Inquisitors are Force-sensitive and they use the dark side, none of them are actually Sith Lords, and that's because of the Rule of Two. There can only be two Sith Lords at a time, a Master and an Apprentice. Always two there are. No more, no less. All of them have red lightsabers, cool double-bladed ones that can spin. Some of them even use them to fly like a helicopter. <laughs> well, except that guy. So that's who the Inquisitors are. Now let's talk about Reva and why the other Inquisitors hate her. The very first character we see in the show is this girl, a youngling who's in the Jedi Temple during Order 66. This girl is 100% going to be the young Reva. This might be the reason why the Grand Inquisitor and the others look down on Third Sister, because most of them turn to the dark side before Order 66. So in their eyes, they join the winning side by choice. This makes them superior. Their brainwashing makes them see themselves as better than the Jedi. 
they were handpicked by Darth Sidious himself. They're basically a space cult. They are so devoted to the mission of hunting Jedi that they elevate themselves above the Jedi with their zealous hatred and propaganda. But Reva turned to the dark only after Order 66. That probably happened after she was captured as a youngling. Then she was tortured and forced to turn to the dark side. The other Inquisitors still see Reva as a former Jedi, an outcast. You came to us from the gutter. All the power in the world can't mask the stench beneath. Jedi scum! This is the reason why Reva is so obsessed with capturing Obi-Wan, because if she achieves that, it elevates her, not just in the eyes of the others, but in the eyes of the one that matters most, Darth Vader. You will forget this fixation with Kenobi, or I will relieve you of your duties, is that clear? If this youngling is indeed Reva, this could also explain why she hates Obi-Wan so much. After Order 66, Obi-Wan sent a distress signal to all the surviving Jedi, a list that seems to grow with each new Star Wars project. When Anakin unleashed the Purge on the Jedi Temple, he activated the Jedi Beacon as a trap to lure any Jedi who survived Order 66 to the Temple. Now, Obi-Wan altered the transmission, sending a warning to the other Jedi to stay away from Coruscant. Do not return to the Temple. That time has passed. This beacon saved many Jedi, like Kanan Jarrus, Sergenda, and Trilla Sanduri. Now that last one became an Inquisitor, and we're going to talk about her more in a bit. But here's the thing. Perhaps the reason why Reva hates Kenobi so much is because of the beacon. If Reva is indeed one of the younglings we see in the first episode, that means that she and the others were trapped on Coruscant after the Purge. While some Jedi in the temple survived, like Grogu, the rest were killed. And with no rescue on the way because of Obi-Wan's transmission, there was no hope for Reva and her friends. So, indirectly, Obi-Wan doomed Reva. Obi-Wan and Yoda came back to the Jedi Temple to search for survivors, but they didn't find any. Not even the younglings survived. Afterwards, they left to deal with Vader and Sidious. So, from Reva's point of view, Obi-Wan abandoned her and the others. The Jedi are cowards. They failed you. Abandoned you. There is no point in protecting them. They would not do the same for you. She was probably captured soon after Order 66. She was tortured and brainwashed by Vader or the Emperor, and eventually she became the third sister. As a young girl, she must have looked up to Obi-Wan. After all, during the Clone Wars, he and Anakin were adored by the people of the Republic. They were the war heroes, the two most popular Jedi in the galaxy. And for a youngling growing up at the time, Obi-Wan would have been an idol to Reva. She aspired to one day be just like him. She might have hoped that the legendary Obi-Wan Kenobi would come and save her from the Empire, but he never came. So from her point of view, she was abandoned by her idol, and all that love turned into a fiery hatred. I loved you! Her hate for Obi-Wan grew deeper, more personal over the decades since Order 66. She knew that Obi-Wan was still alive, and yet, in all the years of hunting Jedi, he never appeared, never did anything to help others. So for Reva, that only validated her blazing hate toward the Jedi Master. What happened to you? You were once a great Jedi. The time of the Jedi is over. The show could also take a completely different direction with the story. Perhaps Reva was captured much later, and she became an Inquisitor just recently, which explains why the others still consider her to be a Jedi. Maybe those other younglings with Reva were captured and killed while she was able to escape. And that trauma led her to lose faith in the Jedi, and since Obi-Wan is the root cause of her friends being captured, she eventually turned to the dark side. Who knows, I mean, maybe in the 10 years since Order 66, Reva became so disillusioned by the Jedi and her hatred toward Obi-Wan that she joined the Inquisitor Order by choice. Tell me where the Jedi is, or this man and his family die. Even to a guy like me, that's cold. And I gotta say, I really like what they're doing with Reva. While she is despicable in her actions, she is a cool villain. There's more to her than just being evil. Also, she does force parkour, which is awesome. But I can't help but sense a lot of similarities between her and another character, and that is the second sister. Earlier, I mentioned two Jedi who survived Order 66 thanks to Obi-Wan's beacon, Sergenda and Trilla Suduri. They appeared in the Jedi Fallen Order video game. After Order 66, Sergenda was captured by the Empire after trying to protect Trilla and some other younglings. But Sarah was captured by the Empire, and after she was tortured, she revealed her Padawan's location which led to Trilla being captured and tortured. Trilla felt betrayed by her master, and with all that torture, she eventually turned to the dark side. She became an Inquisitor known as the Second Sister. And I have to say, Trilla's story in the game is really good, very compelling. I know the darkness that is eating you up inside, and every day we choose to either feed it or fight it. It's too late, sir. 
and there are some parallels between Trilla and Reva. So I hope that Reva will end up being as good as Trilla, but at the same time, I'm also a little worried that it's going to be a rehash of that story. Now, back to why Reva hates Obi-Wan so much. I find it interesting that Reva also knows that Darth Vader is Anakin Skywalker. Lord Vader will be pleased. Anakin Skywalker is alive. Darth Vader's past and identity was a closely guarded secret. Most people in the galaxy assumed that Anakin died during Order 66. It's unclear how many of the Inquisitors knew that Vader was actually Anakin. Yet, somehow, Reva knows, despite her position in the Order being so low. And that got me thinking. What if Reva is a lot closer to Vader than we think? Darth Vader trained the Inquisitors, but it's doubtful that he could trust any of them. Maybe Vader suspected that one of the Inquisitors would attempt to betray him, dethrone him, and take his place as a Sith Lord. After all, these Inquisitors were all Jedi who betrayed the Order. They're capable of anything, even scheming against Darth Vader himself. You have failed me, Inquisitor. Avengers! That's the reason why Sidious limited the Inquisitor's training in the dark side. He didn't want an army of Sith running around. This is precisely why the Rule of Two exists. Sith Lords are treacherous. They will turn on each other in their quest for more power and control. This could be the reason why Vader decided to take one of the Inquisitors under his wing, a youngling he might have captured and spared during Order 66, Reva. He trained her personally and made sure that she would be his eyes and ears, keeping tabs on the other Inquisitors. Reva's connection to Vader is a secret the other Inquisitors cannot know, so she's not receiving any special treatment from Vader. In fact, her being an outcast is part of Vader's plan, a way to reveal the true nature of the Inquisitors. When Reva learned about Vader's past and his perspective on Obi-Wan, she hated the Jedi Master even more. And now she wants to capture Obi-Wan for Vader, prove her worth to him. He's been looking for you for a long time. I will be the one to deliver you to him. So he could elevate her higher in the order and maybe even train her as a full-fledged Sith. All of this could mean that Reva is beyond redemption. I mean, that's sort of the thing with Star Wars, right? We always assume that the bad guys will eventually turn to the good side. I'm actually hoping for a swerve where Reva doesn't get redemption in the end. I think that her ambition makes her stand out as a villain. Most Inquisitors are devoted to their mission, but Reva clearly has bigger aspirations. Well, unless she's like secretly a rebel and she's doing all this to get close to Vader and the Emperor so she can kill him. I'm the spy. What? You? Now, it will be interesting to see where this story goes because the fate of most Inquisitors is death before the events of the original trilogy. So what do you think? Is this youngling young Reva? Will she be redeemed and survive in the show? And what do you think about the show so far? Let me know in the comments below or at me on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe and smash that bell for alerts. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.